The space age exploded when the Soviet Union launched the world's first artificial satellite in 1957. Since then, humanity has explored our cosmic backyard with vigor. And yet two planets have fallen to the planetary probe wayside, from which one is Neptune. And now sit tight because NASA and Elon Musk have discovered something so terrifying and strange on Neptune that will blow your mind. Neptune is one of the classes of planets beyond the asteroid belt known as gas giants. It's impossible to see Neptune with naked eyes, so how did scientists discover it? And have there been any Neptune missions? Is NASA planning to visit Neptune in the near future? Let's find out. In half a century since people visited the moon, NASA has continued to push the boundaries of knowledge to deliver on the promise of American ingenuity and leadership in space. NASA will continue that work by moving forward to not only the moon, but also other mysterious planets. No one can deny that NASA has a long legacy of space exploration. In decades since its founding, the space agency has landed rovers on Mars, sampled the atmosphere of Jupiter, explored Saturn and Mercury, and even landed humans on the moon, to name a few. And you can't forget about the twin probes which NASA launched way ago, each carrying 10 instruments, provided a wealth of new information about interplanetary space and especially Neptune. Before jumping on Neptune, let's see what these twin probes are. Launched from Kennedy Space Center, Voyager 1 was the first twin spacecraft launched in 1977 to reach Jupiter. Voyager 1 set out to collect information on the atmospheres, interiors, satellites, and magnetosphere of Jupiter and Saturn. Voyager 1 took roughly 32,000 pictures of Jupiter, Saturn, and their moons and rings. When its mission was complete, Voyager 1 remained rather quiet until its cameras were turned back on in early 1990 to take pictures of our solar system. Voyager 2 left Earth before Voyager 1. Voyager 2 launched on August 20, 1977, and Voyager 1 launched about two weeks later, on September 5th. Since then, the two spacecraft have been traveling along different flight paths and at different speeds, but Voyager 2's objectives were the same as Voyager 1. Permission was granted to extend its mission to Uranus, Neptune, and beyond. Recognizing that the Voyagers would eventually fly all the way to interstellar space, NASA authorized the production of two golden records to be placed on board the spacecraft. The 12-inch wide, 30-centimeters, gold-plated copper discs also included pictorials showing how to operate them and the position of the sun among nearby pulsars, a type of fast-spinning stellar corpse known as the neutron star, in case extraterrestrials someday stumbled onto the spacecraft and wondered where they came from. Voyager 2 was the first human-made object to fly past the planet Uranus. Voyager 2's encounter with Neptune capped a 4.3 billion mile journey when on August 25, 1989, at 356 UT, it flew about 2,980 miles, 4,800 kilometers, over the cloud tops of the giant planet, the closest of its four flybys. Its ten instruments were still in working order at the time. During the encounter, the spacecraft discovered six new moons, Proteus, Larissa, Despina, Galatia, Thalassa, and Naiad, and four new rings. The planet itself was found to be more active than previously believed. With 680 mile, 1,100 kilometer per hour winds, hydrogen was found to be the most common atmospheric element, although the abundant methane gave the planet its blue appearance. But that was not it. The images that were captured by Voyager 2 amazed as well as scared scientists. Images revealed details of the three major features in the planetary clouds, the lesser dark spot, the great dark spot, and Scooter. You must have heard about the great red spot. It is the most famous feature on Jupiter and the solar system's biggest storm, and for reasons that are still poorly understood, that spot has been shrinking in size for decades. So, scientists were intrigued when they saw a corresponding great dark spot on Neptune. Since the dark spot was spotted, scientists have monitored Neptune using the Hubble Space Telescope and seen new storms develop. In 1995, the new Hubble Space Telescope turned its eye to the blue planet. By then, however, the spot had mysteriously vanished. It could have dissipated at the equator, but scientists do not know for sure how exactly it disappeared. Later that year, Hubble found what might be another dark spot, but it is difficult to determine because the photo resolution of Neptune is so poor at this distance from Earth. But this was not it. Neptune inherits more mystery than scientists ever thought. Astronomers had expected Neptune to look rather boring, a weatherless, featureless world in a deep freeze. Instead, Voyager revealed a turbulent atmosphere with lighter cloud ripples and raging storms. Surprisingly, the fastest winds ever recorded in the solar system whirl on Neptune, up around 1,300 miles, about 2,100 kilometers per hour. Driving this meteorological activity appears to be Neptune's internal heat, which measures possibly hotter than Uranus. How could this even be possible? The same question has snatched the sleep of many scientists. Uranus and Neptune are called ice giants, and rightly so. The planets circle the sun at such great distances, receiving so little external heat, that their average temperatures are hundreds of degrees below freezing. The temperature difference between Neptune's strong internal heat source and its frigid cloud tops, about minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 162 degrees Celsius, might trigger instabilities in the atmosphere that drive large-scale weather changes, NASA officials said. 
Neptune receives heat from the Sun, like all other planets, but there seems to be something fierce inside the planet that makes it generate more heat than it receives. As everybody knows, the more you go further from the Sun, like Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, are each colder in their upper atmosphere. But when you get to Neptune, it's just as warm as Uranus. As physicist Brian Cox discussed in his BBC documentary, The Planets. The source of this extra heat remains a mystery, but does that mean we have a double puzzle on our hands? And can one mystery help to explain the other in some way? Whereas Hamill said, typical planetary heat sources, including leftover internal heat from formation and the decay of radioactive elements, could account for Neptune's temperature. Maybe Neptune is normal and Uranus is the weirdo. It could be that Uranus is unusually cold. Endless list of assumptions and unanswered questions. And as far as we know, there's only one person who keeps the guts and ability to find these out. You might have understood where we are going. It's none other than Elon Musk. For scientists, there are always more questions than answers, and there are always many more missions they want to fly than funds available to fly them. Some planetary scientists have started warming to the idea that SpaceX's new Starship rocket, with its unprecedented lift capabilities and potentially paradigm-shattering low costs, could open up the solar system to a new era of exploration. With Starship, by contrast, NASA might land a cache of scientific payloads the size of a single-story unfinished house. You can really take advantage of the Starship architecture and get to the outer solar system in ways we haven't thought about before, Heldman said. It could provide a revolutionary new way of exploring these worlds. SpaceX and its founder, Elon Musk, view Starship as the key rocket to take humans to Mars and eventually build a self-sustaining settlement there. But such a vehicle would have myriad other uses for science, exploration, and defense purposes. What are your thoughts on this? because we are looking so forward to SpaceX's contribution to space exploration. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks.